Okay, so we're on with Pastor Dave. Uh, Dave did a great job writing this sermon on Moses week one in, the, in this video for pastors and lay teachers who are going to be preaching this sermon. Uh, we're going to just kind of talk this through with Dave a little bit so you can get kind of some backstage access in your sermon prep. Uh, before you get into it, Dave, let me just remind everybody, you can see the full studio sermon, you can see the short version of it, you know, the small group version online, you can see Dave's notes, you can see other people's sermon notes for this, you can share your own notes, all of those links are below this video. So Dave, why don't you start by just kind of giving us the big idea of this first lesson in the Moses series. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Yeah, the big idea is that uh, everybody's going to kind of have a story written about their life. And either we're going to write our story, or someone else is going to write our story, or God's going to write our story. So the big idea is I think we'd all want God to write our story, because if God writes our story, it's really going to be the story we, we wish were written. But if God's going to write our story, then we're going to have to trust them in five different areas. And basically, that's the big idea, that we really want God to write our story, but if he's going to be the author of our story, uh, we're going to really have to trust him to write that story. Okay, so, so that's, that's kind of the big idea. And so, that, Dave, that's as opposed to what's the foil for that, is, is we're trying to sort of take control of our own story kind of thing? Yeah, so, you know, if I decide to write my story, I'm going to probably end up, you know, playing God, um, trying to be in control, and really, I, I'm not really that good at that, and I don't think anybody else is either. So if I try to write it, it's probably going to not turn out well. Or if I, I kind of abdicate that to someone else, that I, I need them more than I need God, um, hmm. they're probably not going to write my story very well either. And so whether it's myself or someone else, that story is going to probably not end up going very well. And I'm, I'm probably not going to be happy with the ending. Yeah, I like what you do to kind of connect it to our culture, and maybe people preaching this can can put their own twist on it, but you you sort of bookend the sermon with who would you have write your story, and you talk about different authors and different maybe directors, and I thought that was kind of an interesting way to get at it, uh, and then also you, you had an inclusio at the end where you kind of brought it back to that at the end. Yeah, to kind of start and end with that kind of idea to get us to hopefully think about you know, the, a story of my life is going to be written, and who do I want to write it? And and hopefully we begin with kind of causing people to think about that. Um, yeah, I do want God to be the author, and and if and if that's true, then how am I going to have to trust Him because He's going to do it different than I'm going to do it? Yeah. Um, but if He's not the author, then I'm going to probably be really disappointed with how my story turns out. Okay, and so you frame it all in the in the story of Moses, the birth story, you know, the river, the Nile River story of Moses. So walk us through these five points as you kind of weave the story of Moses into our story. Well, with, without going into it too much, Moses is born at, at really kind of a horrific time for God's people. And really, if we were writing the story, we probably wouldn't start it out that way. And uh, God's people, they're in bondage, they're in slavery, and they've been crying out to God. What they didn't know is that uh, really Moses is an answer to their prayers, that God was working in their lives before they even knew it. And so that's the first point. If, if God's going to write your story, you need to trust that he's already working in your life. And that's why a lot of people say they look back at their life and they go, yeah, you know what, God was working. So that's the first point, that, that you got to trust that God is already working in your life. Great. Your second point there is about that, he's, that he, he cares about you and he's motivated to take action. Yeah, so God is not just some kind of distant author. He's actually a really caring, loving author. And he really did see the plight and condition of his people. And that really touched his heart, and it motivated him to take action. And God sees our condition, and he sees, you know, when we're, we're in a crisis or we're struggling, it's, God isn't apathetic, he's not distant, he wants to personally get involved. Um, and God is a game changer. He will get involved, and he really is a game changer. Yeah, and the, your, your third point is about God's plans being unstoppable. And again, you're talking about Pharaoh sort of being this powerful person, and yet he couldn't stop the plans of God in the life of Moses and how that relates to us today. 
Yeah, so I'm kind of comparing and contrasting the power of an earthly king with God the Almighty King. And really all of us kind of have ferals at some point in our life, people that have power over us or control. It might be our boss, you know, it, it might be our principal. It could be a lot of people that have seeming insurmountable power, but really they're no match for God. And I, and I think God will, always wants us to remember that, that when I have a plan, really, it's unstoppable. I'm almighty, I'm all-powerful, I'm all-wise. And so, yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying to draw to our attention, that we need to remind ourselves who God really is. Yeah, and, and just a programming note for people who are preaching this entire series in week four, then we're going to come back to that kind of whole idea when when uh, when during the Exodus story, you know, that last episode in the story where Moses is leading the people out. And again, it's we're going to talk in that sermon about uh, God's power over uh, Pharaoh-like addiction or any kind of bondage in our life. So that's just good for people to keep in mind. You might even want to throw a teaser out there if you're preaching this one to say, hey, we're going to get to this some more in week four of the series. It might be a good way to get people to keep coming back for the series. All right, so Dave, uh, the fourth point you make is that God has no accidents. And you're not talking about wetting the bed, I, I presume, right? Um, well, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, if you were writing the story, would you really have birthed Moses at that time? Because really at that time, there was an edict to kill all firstborn males. So that, that seems like a terrible time for God to birth someone, unless you understand who God is, that he doesn't have accidents. He knows what he's doing. He birthed Moses at the right time. He, he birthed Moses right when he wanted to because Moses is going to help lead us entire people out of bondage and slavery. So kind of the point there is to really trust, in some sense, the sovereignty of God and the timing of God. And really, and, and what I want to say here a little bit, that life isn't a straight line. And I think we kind of want it to be a straight line, but it's really not. It has peaks and valleys and it has detours. Matter of fact, Steve and I uh, talked today. He's got a really fun graphic for this. It kind of contrasts how we like a straight line, but but really God has valleys and rivers and all kinds of ways. But, but if we trust him, and that's the whole point of this thing, really is trusting God with our life, which is our story, we're going to see that he knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah, and we'll make sure that image gets in the comments below, so if people want to use that image, because that's not in your original uh, sermon slides but people can add that image uh, to it if they want to. I think that's a good point. So then your last point is that Moses, and this, this, is a, this last point's a little bit tricky because it, it doesn't really depart, but it's, a, um, so maybe just talk us through this last point about parenting, you know, the impact of parents. Yeah, and really it's more understanding how God uses Moses' as parents to help write his story. I mean, really, yeah. that's, that's really yeah. what it is that he's using Moses' parents in a strategic and significant way because they're people of faith. They demonstrate tremendous faith in God by saving Moses' life. And so kind of the idea here is, is if, if you're a parent, and I, and I want to talk to just not parents, but prospective parents, even grandparents, mm -hmm. that if you live a life of faith, uh, talk to men. I mean, the studies are overwhelming. When, when, a, when a dad lives a life of faith, most of the time, his children do as well. And so, so the idea is that God's going to use some significant people in your life to write your story. And Moses was really blessed by having parents that lived by faith, and that really enabled and helped Moses to live by faith. Yeah, I think it's a great last point. I think it's a real practical point, and I like how you're tying it into the story, the story concept of he, he uses parents to help write the story. So, but a good chance to challenge parents and really everybody. So, Dave, it's a five pointer, which is which means probably. I mean, again, depending at our church, we like to shoot for around thirty five minutes. So, probably a pretty qu quick pace because you're telling the Moses story and you've got five points to tell. Is that anything about that? Did you go pretty quick in the studio version? Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Brian. Yeah, the. Even, you know, it's five points. I think they're helpful points, but I think you have to have good pace with the points. Yeah. And um, so if you have good pace with the points, it's like a well-written story on that theme. It's, it's going to flow well. So don't get bogged down in the point. Um, keep your pace going through the points. 
Uh, and the other thing I'll say about parents is, is really because I think it's what we're all about, that really Moses' parents pursued God. Mm -hmm. And so it's no surprise that Moses ended up pursuing God. And that's really what God wants from all parents. But, but yeah, back to your point, I think pace matters in this one. And don't get bogged down on a section. Just make sure you, your pace is its actually pretty balanced throughout the whole talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's great. And again, anyone that's preaching this, you can uh, check out uh, the links below. If you want to leave your own comments or ask Dave questions, you can do that below. If you want to look at manuscripts, uh, if you want to leave your own manuscript, all of that stuff is below. And, and I, I also encourage everybody who's preaching this, make sure you look through the discussion questions for small group and family because those questions are great, and that might give you a little more perspective on preaching this. And also check out the related resources, those top 25 related resources. And uh, so anyone that's using this stuff, uh, dig into this, and I hope uh, we just pray for God's blessing as you preach this at your church or at your campus. Dave, thanks for helping us out with this. Thanks. You're welcome. Great.